Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from Me Get Tech. I've always wanted to test out Genshin Impact on my new iPhone 13 Pro Max, but I didn't have the software to actually measure it. But today, that's changed because I now have a license we test Perf Dog, which I'm going to be using to test the performance of my iPhone 12 Pro Max and my iPhone 13 Pro Max. So I'm going to be checking the average frames per second that these two phones will get, as well as the temperature and power that they're going to be using during that test. And if you guys are interested in using this very useful tool as well, I put up the link for we test Perf Dog, so go ahead and check it out on the video description. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this performance test started. Alright, so before we go ahead and start with the test, just a couple of key specs for the phone. Both the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch XDR OLED display. Though for this year's model, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, it finally got a high refresh rate and it has a 120Hz refresh rate compared to the 60Hz on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. They both have 256 GB of storage and this time around the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a slightly bigger battery with the 4,352 mAh battery while the iPhone 12 Pro Max has a 3,687 mAh battery. And just to keep things fair, both these iPhones have the latest iOS software version which is 15.5. So let me go ahead and test out the iPhone 12 Pro Max first and we'll see how it fares with Genshin Impact. And also to make things interesting, I'm going to be testing out the Black Shark Fun Cooler 2 Pro on these two iPhones. So we'll see how well they perform when the iPhone doesn't need to dial down its performance because it's getting too hot. So I'm going to be running two sets of tests, one without the cooler and one with the cooler. And we'll see how much better these phones perform with the use of a cooler like this one. Let's go into the graphic settings. Okay, graphics. Current performance load says overclocked because graphics quality is set to custom, render resolution is high, shadow quality high, everything is at the highest that you can set for this phone. So I'm just going to be walking around a bit in Inazuma and getting into random fights. So let's see how the phone performs. Alright, so let's go ahead and see the graphic settings first. All at the highest setting, but let me dial down FPS to 60 instead of 120 because I just want to compare how well it's going to do at, at 60 frames per second. And everything else is pretty much the same as the graphic setting on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Yeah. 
All right, guys. Same 18 minute test. A bit cooler on this one, 38.4 compared to the 40 on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And at the back, 42, 39, and 35.2. So again, it's the top part of the iPhones that get the hottest. So very similar at the back, but a bit cooler up front. And right now, I've given the iPhone 12 Pro Max time to cool down. And just to confirm, yep, your temperatures are pretty cool around 26 degrees now. And for this next test, I'm going to be attaching my Black Shark Pond Cooler 2 Pro. Okay, now, so here's the Pond Cooler Pro 2. Let me attach my USB-C cable and just to ensure that I get maximum performance, I'm not going to be using a power pack and I'm going to be using it on one of my older Samsung chargers. Okay, there you go guys. You've got that nifty LED display that tells you the current temperature of the back of the Fun Cooler Pro 2. So it's been running for a while, it's around 7 degrees now and if you can see it's making perfect contact with the back of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So this is going to ensure that this will provide maximum cooling effect on your iPhone. Alright guys, so 18 minutes into the test, let's measure some temps. So we were getting around 40 degrees Celsius without the cooler on our initial test. And this time it's a pretty cool 36.9 or around 37 degrees at the top where it gets the hottest. And in the middle, pretty cool 30 and at the bottom an even colder 29.6. So in terms of the temperature guys, so the back is saying it's around 14 degrees Celsius. So we don't really have to worry about condensation on the back of the phone because it doesn't get cold enough when you're actually playing games. But if you leave this cooler on when you're not playing a demanding game, then you can expect the cooler will get really cold and will definitely cause some condensation inside your phone. So let's go ahead and remove this now. So temperatures at the top of the phone is around 38.4, a cool 25.5 at the back and 28 at the bottom. So. And for our last test, again got the iPhone 13 Pro Max and I'm going to be connecting the Phone Cooler Pro 2. So let me connect it again at the exact middle of the phone. So, starting the test, or going to start recording the test in 3, 2, 1.
Alright, so went a bit over time on this last test, but let's check the temperatures at the top. A bit cooler at 33 up there, guys. 28.5 in the middle and 28.5 at the bottom. And again, on the cooler, it's around 14 degrees Celsius. And if I remove this, the back is a cool 24.1, 34.5 at the top. 26.8 at the bottom so definitely a lot cooler and a lot more comfortable to play when paired with the black shark fun cooler pro 2 okay guys so four rounds of tests done two on the iphone 12 pro max two on the iphone 13 pro max so let's go ahead and discuss the results so as expected guys, in terms of the average frames per second, the iPhone 12 Pro Max without the cooler hit around 50.7. The iPhone 13 Pro Max did a bit better at 56.7. And as expected, with the addition of the Black Shark Fun Cooler Pro 2, the iPhone 12 Pro Max did a lot better. It improved the average frames per second and it got a 54.1 average FPS. Well, in the case of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, it hit an even more impressive 58.8. In terms of the power used during that test, the iPhone 12 Pro Max without a cooler used around 4050 milliwatts. The iPhone 13 Pro Max used a bit more, 4318. Things changed when I used the Fun Cooler Pro 2. The iPhone 12 Pro Max averaged a higher power draw at 5390 six because the bionic a13 chip didn't need to lower its performance because the temperature is pretty cool so one disadvantage of using a cooler is your phone will be running at almost maximum performance and will definitely impact your battery life So what does the results of my test mean for all of you guys? If you want to enjoy playing games at their maximum graphic setting and not have to worry about stuttering or low FPS, then I suggest you get your hands on the Black Shark Fun Cooler Pro 2. And some other alternatives for the Fun Cooler Pro 2 is the Fun Cooler Pro 1. That's still a pretty good cooler and it's a lot cheaper than the Fun Cooler Pro 2 but the only difference is that one doesn't have an LED display showing the temperature of your cooler. Nubia also released their own version of their coolers which is the Nubia Red Magic Dual Cooler as well as the Nubia Red Magic Turbo Cooler. So I guess I'll go ahead and end this pretty interesting Genshin Impact test between the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Let me know what kind of performance you're getting on these devices if you have them and I would love to discuss it on the comment section down below. But until then, a sub would be massively appreciated. Please like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification, and see you all on my next one.